So do you have a corporate social responsibility program in your business? CSR, all businesses these days seem to have a great CSR program and they want to integrate some sort of giving back to people or the environment into their everyday business. That's what we're going to be talking about during this interview. And I'm going to be talking to a real expert on this topic, Masami Sato, and that's coming right up. So we're on the topic of CSR, and there is no better person to talk to than my good friend, Masami Sato. And who is Masami Sato? Masami started a giving-related business a number of years ago, and it's called B1G1, which stands for Buy One, Give One. So Masami, tell us, what is Buy One, Give One, and why would it be of interest to business owners and entrepreneurs? So the world of B1G1, buy one, give one, is very simple. So if you just imagine um, every time you have, let's say, a cup of coffee, a child receives access to life-saving water, or every time you uh, get inspired by reading a book, a tree gets planted, or every time you go to a dentist, somebody receives access to healthcare. So the world of B1G1 connects businesses with a desire to give and uh, with the worthy causes around the world so that every time business is done, something great can also happen in the world. And B1G1 is today a movement of businesses that are um, doing this way of giving and making uh, giving part of what they do and transforming the world together. So um, more than 3,000 businesses have worked with us so far, and they have created over 230 million giving impacts to date. So that's B1G1 in a nutshell. That's amazing, isn't it? I, I think so many business owners and, and individuals kind of strive over the years to think of a way, how can I give back? And they give to various charities. But I just love the way that you've structured this, where businesses can integrate this giving into everyday business and you make it so easy because it's all done on an online portal. Um, I mean, I, I came across uh, B1G1 oh, about 12 years ago now at an event and I, I just <laughs> loved it straight away. I had to join. I thought this is what we've been looking for. Um, and, and uh, you know, your chairman, Paul Dunn, um, always laughs at me. He said, because about three hours after I joined the program, I made my first giving. I was just so excited mm -hmm. about it all. But I, I think it's a wonderful way. But, to allow businesses to really act on that and get some traction into their CSR mm -hmm. programs. Fantastic. Yeah. And I'm just uh, you know, quite curious about business people like you too, um, because when we started to be one g one you know, we thought that this is an initiative to help businesses give away their hard-earned money rather than uh, helping businesses make money, more money, because that type of services, you know, I, we can imagine that there is a high demand for that. If businesses can make more money by doing something, then people will pay and then become a customer for those businesses. But what, you know, a million amazed us was that um, there are businesses out there who resonate with idea like this. So Rob, um, for you, why you know, did you join B1G1 actually well, in the first place? Yeah, look, it, it was a very personal thing. Um, and, and like I said, I was attending a conference in Melbourne, Australia, I think uh, about 12 years ago. Um, and, you know, I heard the story uh, about how you established the organization and, and the work that it did. And I suppose my wife and I had been searching for something um, in a couple of years prior to that. You know, we, we wanted to try and give back. We wanted to have, you know, a little bit of an impact in our own small way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we tried to find sort of charities that resonated with us that we could give to. And then suddenly we were presented with buy one give one and the opportunity to just <laughs> pick and choose so many hundreds of different charities very worthy causes you know all around the world and you know literally online the click of a button we could give to a whole range of different projects and the thing that i really loved about it which i think a lot of people kind of worry about with charitable giving is that there was kind of no overhead contribution and you know we often wonder when we give to charities in the street how much of that really goes to the, the people in need or how much of that is going to actually planting trees and how much goes in marketing and overheads. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the thing that really 
uh, got me over the line with buy one, give one. It was, there is no overhead. Every cent that you give actually goes to those in need. You know, buy one, G1 doesn't take a cut. Uh, the worthy cause that you're contributing to isn't allowed to take any of the donation for overheads. It's all got to go, you know, directly to, to those in need. And it, it was just perfect timing for us. You know, we, we were just looking for something to, uh, to I guess, enable that, that giving. And it took away the... Um, I guess that difficulty of trying to decide what programs to give to, because suddenly we had access to hundreds of them. So uh, I have to thank you very much for <laughs> starting the whole thing and, and showing it to us. Mm -hmm. But when you started to give um, through B1J1, you know, how, like, what, what kind of impact did you experience or what kind of reactions did you see? Yeah, it was really interesting. Um, and I mean, it's it's not the reason that business owners give. You 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 don't give just to try and impress your market or impress your clients. Um, that's really not what it's about. I think it, you know it's got to come from your your core values and, and your heart, if you like. And you know, it's just a, such a fantastic thing to do. So there weren't any expectations on what the reaction might be externally, and and we don't kind of overly promote what we do because it's somewhat. I don't know, not embarrassing. What would the term be? It's, um, I, th I think to a degree, it's a very private thing, um, you know, charity giving and, and giving to worthy causes. And it's not something you really want to scream from the rooftops. So we, we didn't expect to get um, much of a reaction from the market. But what was really interesting was the reaction internally. And, uh, you know, our staff right across two or three businesses um, really loved the idea of the program. And we would get um, staff helping to select the worthy causes that we were going to contribute to. And people really got engaged behind it all. Um, and what we what we actually do in the business is basically every time we make a sale, a proportion of that income goes to one of the worthy causes. Um, and it's, it's really fun. So, uh, you know, the accounts department tell me all of the invoices that are due to be sent out to clients. And I personally go through and, and select worthy causes that I think will resonate with our clients. And it's fantastic, you know, to be able to send the invoice and say, oh, you know, and, and thank you for working with us. And on your behalf, we've given water to 10,000 people or we've, you know, fed 500 orphans or, or whatever. One of the things when, that kind of surprised me but I didn't have any expectations, was initially I was expecting people to sort of go, oh, wow, this is really cool. We love what you're doing. And there was nothing. <laughs> it was like you could hear a pin drop. I thought, oh, I thought we, yeah, we might have got some feedback. Um, but we very rarely get direct feedback. Um, and, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, that's not why you do it. Um, you're, you're not looking for some sort of credit or, you know, um, to, to get a big face, as they would say in Asia, you're, you're doing it because it's a good thing to do. But to get no reaction, I just thought was really interesting. And I think what happened is that people weren't quite sure how to react. You know, what, you've just done this? Oh, you know, how, kind of how do I respond to that? What's really interesting, though, is when I'm talking to clients face to face, um, and, and quite a lot over the years have, have sort of just thrown into a conversation, oh, and by the way, we love what you do with that giving program. Um, you know, and, and it's that, that sort of one-on-one -on -one feedback, which is really rewarding. And, and you know, it's nice that, that people notice what you're doing. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's been, it's given our whole business a lift, you know, in, in energy and purpose. So it's been really terrific. Mm, mm, that's cool. That's cool. And, uh, um, you know, for most business owners, I think the challenge is that they think like they would do something one day when they become really successful. Like, mm. oh, uh, we will start a foundation one day, maybe when we become that's, really that's, successful. That's, that's where or, we were, you know, oh, we want to start. Oh, you thought about that. We want to do this. Yeah. And you never do because you, you never build up, you know, enough capital to be able to do it. Uh, and so you don't get started, but but you know this program means that you can you can start with a dollar, you know, um, and you know very small amounts. So uh, uh, yeah, it's absolutely tremendous. Mm.
And um, you know, I'm very curious because you've been giving consistently over for long, you know, time, like in 12 years now. <laughs> so um, giving is something that is not like required for business to do. Like it's something that you do because you, be I believe, you know, I think that you believe in it. But the thing is, when we try to do something good for us, quite often like changing a habit or changing pattern is very difficult. So um, people might find it difficult to like maintain long term um, activities mm -hmm. of something that's good but not mandatory or necessary yeah. so in your um, perspective what would be the key to creating a real like long-term uh, you know impact yeah look, I, I think um, we can talk about I guess engaging you know everybody in the business in it and, and so on but mm -hmm. ultimately it comes down to the business owner wanting to do it and, and driving it um, and I think the the opportunity that you give business owners is to make it habitual. So, you know, if it's something I've got to remember to do and, oh, we must give to that charity and, and do that charity, you know, it becomes very maybe infrequent and, and you know, not habitual. I, I think the way that you show business owners in how to use the program best is marvelous because you you link it to everyday activities in your business and therefore it just becomes a part of your everyday business. So you don't have to think about it. Um, you know, accounts now know, um, you know, at the end of every month, they send me a list of um, all of the invoices that are going out to clients. We, we have an online spreadsheet and I go down and I put which charities we're going to support, um, how much is going to go to each one. Someone else in the business puts together gratitude certificates that go out to the clients um, with their invoices. So it, it's just become part of our business process. So we don't even have to think about it. Um, and, I, and I have to say, when I get that email from accounts every month, you know, these are the invoices going out. It's kind of, it's the best part of the month <laughs> because I... <laughs> I get to sit there and spend an hour, you know, deciding um, what worthy causes that we're going to support this month. And uh, I've, I actually found that quite difficult in, in the early stages because there are so many great worthy causes to support, you know, and you felt like, oh, gee, you know, is, is this more deserving than that one? Uh, but over time, you know, I think we learned not to overthink it, um, that, you know, as long as we're giving every month and we're spreading that giving, you know, across a, across a whole range of initiatives, then, you know, we're doing some good. So the key for me is just making it a habit. And, and who, who wouldn't want a habit of, of giving to, you know, to people, the environment and, and all sorts of causes? And um, I should have done this before, you know, we arranged this call to just go and then take a look at your B1J1 impacts. But the, I believe that the, over the you know last 12 years, you've created so many impacts. So um, you are one of those businesses that we actually think is a kind of model B1J1 business because you not only give regularly, but you sustained that regularity over such a long period of time. So um, I, I, as I remember correctly, you have already created like over 7 million giving impacts mm. or yeah, is that, I am so. I right? Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this shows like how, um, you know, one business can create massive impacts mm. in the world by doing something long term. So mm. as a final um, question from me to you, mm. um, what would you say to other businesses who may be like contemplating how they might do something meaningful in the world. What 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 word do you give to them? I would say, and and, and look, this this was not supposed to be a promotion for B1G1. <laughs> I, I don't want it to sound like that, but if you're looking for a way to genuinely give back uh, and to maximize the impact of your giving. I can't think of a better program, to be honest, because it, it has all the components of, of what you want, um, what you need. You've got a whole range of different projects to give to. There's going to be something in there that, that really resonates with you. The difficulty is there are so many. There, there are worthy causes you can support to suit all kinds of budgets. Um, you know, for a dollar, you, you can give water to a whole bunch of people in Africa or, or Cambodia. You know, those are ones that we support. Uh, I think it's for $70. You can you can pay for someone to have cataract surgery. You know, if you want to give $5,000, you can build someone a house. Um, so you, you can you can kind of tailor 
uh, your, your giving to the sort of budget that you've got. And I love the way that you break down the giving into little bite-sized chunks. You know, it's, it's like that saying of, um, you know, the, the story of the, the guy walking along the beach, throwing starfish into the ocean. And have you heard that story? And, and mm, a guy yes. comes up to him and says, what are you doing? He says, oh, they're, they're going to dry out in the sun. They're all going to die. I want to throw them back in the water. And the guy says, but there are thousands. Now, how can you save them all? And he says, I can't. And he throws another one. He said, but I saved that one and that one. And I, and I think that's what the small giving is about. And, and like you said, you know, we've, we've reached something like, oh, I don't know, seven point something uh, million giving impacts. When we started, you know, you, you had 200 and then you reached a thousand and you thought, wow, that's great. And then you, we reached a million and that was great. And, and it's a wonderful way to, um, I, I guess, get a feedback loop or, you know, a KPI or a measurement on how you're going. Um, and a lot of people say to me, what, what exactly is a giving impact? Well, a giving impact is it's a simple uh, part of the giving, you know, broken down into its smallest component. So a giving impact could be giving water to a person for a day. It could be paying for a brick to build a school. It could be providing, um, you know, a notebook and pencil for a kid in Nepal. Or um, one I used to love was guinea pigs in, in Peru, was it? I'm not doing that one anymore. You could, you could give a guinea pig to a family in Peru and, yeah, they'd breed them and eat them. Um, so, you know, I, th I think the key for me is that you've managed to break it down into those tiny little components. That, so it's just so easy to do, you know, and, and it breaks down that barrier of, oh, how much have we got to accumulate before we can actually give something? Well, give a dollar and <laughs> you can start. So, uh, no, I think it's wonderfully structured. So I, I have to thank you for for doing it so many years ago and, and for engaging so many businesses and giving them the opportunity. <laughs> I have to thank you for you know what you do and also uh, being such a great example of B1J1 yeah. businesses around the world. So thank you, Rob. <laughs> hey, look, the, the whole purpose of this was for me to talk to you about why you started B1J1. <laughs> you ended up you ended up turning the tables on me. But the, there might be people watching um, this video who are wondering, well, that that sounds really good. How do we get involved in that? C can we put a link down below the video or something? And and maybe if uh, people want to find out more about the program, how, how about we put a link to um, B1G1 so you, people can jump on there and have a look. Uh, and if you're wondering about how businesses um, kind of integrate it into their business, I'll, I'll put a link to one of our pages, which shows exactly how we do it too. So you can see that's how our business uses it. And if you want to hear more, you can talk to B1G1. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. No, that's, it's great talking to you, Masami. And uh, hopefully we'll get together face-to-face -to -face sometime on uh, maybe on one of the study tours where we actually get to go and visit a lot of the worthy causes. That could be the topic of a whole other video. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate your time. That's right. Thank you so much, Rob, and all the best with what you do. We love what you are doing. Thanks. Bye.